I've said this many times before, and I'll say it again. Political correctness, cancel culture, and wokeness have all but gagged us. Adding insult to injury, CBC has announced a series of words that should not be used in our vocabulary. One of the words in trouble is the word savage. How then do I describe the recent events that happened in my country of birth, Pakistan, last week? There was a horrific mob lynching of a Sri Lankan national in Pakistan's Sialkot by a hardliner mob. The act of burning the man alive was one of utmost savagery. Following this shameful event, in Faisalabad, Pakistan, another incident of savage violence took place, where four women were disrobed, tortured, and paraded through a shopping area in broad daylight by a group of men who accused them of shoplifting. For you to understand the mindset of the savagery, the defense minister of Pakistan said that the youth sometimes get carried away with emotions. Seriously? In the same context, our previous prime minister, Stephen Harper, called these and other acts barbaric practices. And you know that this is one of the reasons he lost the election. But we should not lose our moral compass. South of the border, Islamists are of the mindset where they consider themselves the victims and find it easy to blame the West for all their shenanigans. In a story from the Jerusalem Post, we read that according to a speech made by the Council on American Islamic Relations, CARE, San Francisco Executive Director and former Women's March board member, Zahra Billu said, Zionist synagogues, the Anti-Defamation League, Hillel and other Jewish organizations are enemies who are part of a conspiracy behind Islamophobia, American police brutality, and U.S. border control. This is so shameful. Meanwhile, very troubling issues are emerging with regards to the Toronto District School Board, the TDSB. If you recall, some years ago, the TDSB allowed congregational Friday prayers in one school cafeteria where the girls had to stand at the back and imams were called in to give sermons. At that time, I spoke out and wrote against this discriminatory practice. The TDSP initially cancelled an event with Nobel Peace Prize laureate Nadia Murad. The reason given was that such an event could foster Islamophobia. Now, who is Nadia Murad? At the age of 14, Nadia Murad, a Yazidi, was kidnapped by the Islamic State jihadis and taken into sex slavery. Murad and other young women were taken prisoner and subjugated to beatings and rape. Murad's story is one that everyone needs to hear because it champions the cause of brutalized and victimized women everywhere. News reports say that the TDSP is reconsidering the initial decision. The TDSP shows enormous concern about Islamophobia, but has very little angst against anti-Semitic comments by their own. According to a report in May, when the conflict between Israel and Hamas was at its height, a TDSP staff member distributed materials to an opt-in list of TDSP that included anti-Israel and anti-Semitic content. It justified suicide bombings and violence against Israeli Jews. The intent was that they would be resources that could be used in their classroom. Trustee Alexandra Lulka Rotman condemned these materials when she learned about them and reviewed them. Shockingly, the staff person who actually distributed the material was cleared of any wrongdoing and allowed back to work, while trustee Alexandra Lulka faced a complaint and censure. If this is the direction our public school boards are going, then we are doomed for sure. Let's take a look at our efficient government, which seems to be going in reverse gear. They have no idea what's really happening. 
For example, at airports, the rules change every hour and you get conflicting information, which is utterly confusing for all travelers. Hospitals and old people's home are also in a state of confusion and the ones who have suffered the most, as we know, are the seniors. On spending, the government can't answer the simple question about where the money for the $7 billion recovery plan is coming from. Welcome to third world political antics in a first world country. This is Rahil Raza for Rebel News. Let me wish you all a very Merry Christmas before we are gagged from even saying this and a very happy new year. Don't forget to click or like www.rebelnews.com.